Hello everyone, this is Gunimagam Sai Mansa studying second year medicine. Today I am going to do the examination of musculoskeletal system by conducting various tests. It is very important to sanitize your hands before you observe your patient. This is my patient for conducting the musculoskeletal system examination today. His name is Sai Charan and he is 15 years old. Now let's start with the full shoulder examination. To perform the complete shoulder examination, ask your patient to take his shirt off and let's get started. Inspect from front. Observe neck and head posture, symmetry of shoulders, deloid vesting, alignment of shoulder girdle and scars. Inspect side for scars. Inspect from behind for scars, deloid vasting, alignment of shoulder girdle, trapezius vasting, paravertebral muscle vasting, and winged scapula. Inspect for winged scapula, long thoracic injury by pressing both hands against the wall. Now assess and compare the joint temperature. Palpate the shoulder girdle and acromoclavicular joint and palpate the cricoid process. Then head to the humerus and palpate greater tuberosity of the humerus. From behind, palpate the borders of the spine of the scapula. Since we are examining one side of the shoulder, examine the scapula on one side of the shoulder properly. Inspect movements in shoulder joints by moving both hands behind the head and elbows back. Now relax. Then inspect by moving both hands back as far as possible. Now let's inspect active shoulder abduction. For inspecting active shoulder flexion, by reaching both arms and in front and as high as possible and repeat it to the back as far as possible. Relax. To perform the active body abduction, now repeat by bringing arms out to the side and all the way to the top and to down across the body. To perform active shoulder internal rotation, now bring in elbows and arms out and then across the body. Let's continue with the crossover test. The crossover test is designed to provoke asymptomatic AC joint. To conduct the test, elevate the arm to 90 degrees of flexion and then at maximum horizontal adduction. A positive test will produce pain on top of shoulder near AC joint. Let's continue with the Apley scratch test. Apley scratch test is used to test for quick shoulder assessment and allows to get quick information on patient's functional capacity as it combines the movements of medical rotation with extension and abduction and lateral rotation with flexion and abduction. For this test, the patient should try to bring the hands together on the back while one hand comes from the above and one from the below. Check for differences. Dominant side shows more restriction than the non-dominant side. Let's continue with the near impingement test. Near impingement test is a common test used to assess the shoulder impingement. To conduct this test, have patient in sitting position with one hand depress the scapula and with other hand internally rotate the patient's arm and then perform maximally forced forward flexion in glenohumeral joint. A positive test is pain reproduction on injured side. Let's perform the Hawkins-Kennedy test. Hawkins-Kennedy test is a common test used in the assessment of shoulder impingement. To perform this test, have your patient in sitting position. 
elevate arm to 90 degrees of forward flexion and have it rest on one of your arm then perform passive internal rotation a positive test is provocation of pain let's perform the drop arm test bring arm to 90 degrees abduction and external rotation ask patient to hold position and release supporting hand this test is positive for full thickness tears of supra and intraspinatus if your patient is unable to control. Let's perform the empty can test. Arms of patient should be elevated 90 degrees in scapular plane. Then arms are fully internally rotated so that thumbs point downwards. Pressure applied by examiner resists downward. Positive test is indicated by weakness or pain. Now let's perform complete wrist and hands examination. To, uh, to complete this examination, place hands on a pillow and observe them. Inspect for scars and swelling, deformities, skin and nail changes and muscle wasting. Turn them and inspect for scars and swelling, thinar and hypothenar wasting. Lift arms and inspect the elbows for psoriatic plaques and rheumatoid nodules. Feel for temperature on both sides of the hands. Now palpate the radial and ulnar pulses. Assess thenar and hypothenar bulk. Assess for palmar thickening. Assess sensation of hand of patient. Ask patient to close eyes and touch gently on both hands and ask them to say yes when they feel it. Can you say yes when you feel the hands of mine? Yes. 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 Turn your hands. Also say yes when you feel my hands, okay? Yes. 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 Okay. Squeeze metacarpophalangeal joints. Let me know if you feel any pain. Okay. Inspect metacarpophalangeal joints one by one. Can you turn your hand? Also inspect proximal interphalangeal joints. Inspect distal interphalangeal joints. Now inspect carpometacarpal joint. Bimanually palpate wrist joints for tenderness and asymmetry. Palpate ulnar bodies of elbow and note for any rheumatoid nodules or psoriatic plagues. Inspect for wrist flexion and passive wrist flexion and extension. Let's perform the Finkelstein test. This test is used to detect inflammation of synovial sheath of thumb. To perform this test, have your patient's affected extremity extended so wrist remains at edge of the treatment table. The table is positioned with aspect of forearm on table and ulnar aspect of hand hanging off the edge. Forearm is maintained neutral in its first step. In the second step, apply external force using your hand towards the gravity. If pain does not persist, go to the third step. In the third step, pull the patient's thumb towards the gravity. If pain exists, positive if patient reports pain aggravation at tip of the styloid process. Gently apply all deviation force to hand which results in passive seat across first dorsal compartment. 
let's perform the thumb abduction test to perform this test position of patient's hand is going to be supinated and going to stabilize metacarpal and wrist and palpate at the abdor pollis brevis muscle abdor pollis brevis muscle is presented here with resistance place fingers here and push it and push the thumb towards the abductor pollis brevis muscle downwards and abduction and ask patient to put maximum resistance can resist your finger from pulling positive is pain persists let's perform the tinel's test to conduct test patient should be in sitting position support arm to be tested and using a reflex hammer lightly tap on the ulnar nerve just proximal to cubital tunnel 4 to 6 times positive if patient reports symptoms of pain and numbness let's perform the phalanx test to perform phalanx test ask patient to flex his wrists maximally and hold dorsal side of hands together for 1 minute positive if patient experiences tingling in thumb index finger and middle finger and lateral half of the ring finger it is positive for carpal tunnel syndrome if positive inspect the front side and back of the joint and inspect for soft tissues and bones inspect for scars erythema or lacrations palpate soft tissues and bones for any abnormalities assess the temperature of the joints feel bony margins of joint flex knee to 90 degrees and start at tibial crest wave and then to tibial tuberosity and then tendon feel patellar margin and for quadriceps insertion palpate behind the knees for any aneurysms now let's test the bulge sign of the knee place one hand superior to the patella pushes tissue inferiorly while the other hand presses medial aspect of knee watching medial joint area hand is taken to press quickly along the lateral knee positive test moves fluid wave medially let's test for the balloon sign patella pushes tissue inferiorly while other hand presses proximal aspect of knee watching medial joint area hand is taken to press quickly along the medial knee this test moves fluid wave proximally Now let's performing the test for balloting the patella. To perform the patella tap test, have patient in supine lying position with fully extended leg, then stroke downwards just until the supra patella pouch and press downwards with other hand. Perform the same movement and stop just below the apex of the patella. While applying downward pressure, take one finger and press on patella. and see whether it is floating now let's perform the mcmorey test to perform this test place the patient in supine position lying rotate tibia medially and bring knee to extension repeat process a couple of times with a different angle of knee flexion in order to test the all posterior aspect of lateral meniscus to test the medial meniscus 
bring knee to full flexion and laterally rotate to tibia. Now let's perform the valgus stress test. To perform this test, place your patient in a supine lying position and ask them to relax as much as possible. With one hand, grab onto lower leg and other hand fixate the femur. Then slightly externally rotate tibia and perform passive abduction in knee joint thus putting stress on medial collateral ligament. Look for excessive gapping on medial side. Perform test again in 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. Now let's perform the varus stress test. To perform this test, place your patient in supine lying position and ask them to relax as much as possible. Perform, grab on the lower leg with one hand above ankle joint and fix it with other hands on medial side of femur. Apply lateral rotation in knee joint and perform passive adduction. Put stress on lateral collateral ligament. Perform again at 20 degrees to 30 degrees of flexion for the varus stress test. Now let's perform the anterior drawer test. To perform this test, place your patient in supine lying position and place the hip to 45 degrees angle and the knee to 90 degrees. Fix the position by gently sitting on foot of the patient. Palpate joint line with your thumbs and move tibia anteriorly in explosive movement. Let's perform the Lashman test. To perform the Lashman test, place your patient in supine position. Bring patient's testing leg into 30 degrees of flexion. Fix it femur with other hand. Bring tibia into slight external rotation and then try to translate tibia anteriorly. Now let's perform the posterior drawer test. To perform this test, place your patient in supine lying position with a hip angle of 45 degrees and knee angle of 90 degrees. Fix the position by sitting on patient's foot. Then palpate joint line and push TBI posteriorly in explosive movement. Now let's 